Hey everyone, how y'all doing? My name is Mateo and I am from Machine Masters. So in our last video, I used a plugin called Nova from Tokyo Dawn and a lot of people really liked the plugin, especially since it's free. So a lot of people asked if I could focus on the plugin and show all the various features of it. Now, it's a pretty comprehensive EQ. There's a lot to it, so I'm going to try to go over everything as quickly and as easily as possible. So let's get right into it. So we're going to look at the Nova EQ from Tokyo Dawn, and we're going to start from the top left and work our way down. So at the top left, we have the key input. Now this is used for side chaining other signals to this EQ. Now, for those of you that saw our last video, you'll be very familiar with it because that's what we use to help us make space in our instrumental for our vocals. Now, just below that, we have our drop down menu for our various settings that come with this plugin. I usually like to recommend people trying out the presets that come with plugins because it kind of helps to give you an idea of what the developers think is a good use for the plugin and it kind of gives you a good starting point point. and once you start playing around with those settings you kind of get more familiarized with it and know what you like next to that we have our a b this is nice if you want to make kind of subtle changes but you don't want to lose your changes so you can kind of compare between two different settings so say we have our ds over here Let's just activate something and then we copy this and we pull up our other DS. Say we want it like that. Not a very effective DS, but whatever. So now I can switch between the two and decide which one I like better. Great. So next to AB, we have precise and eco. And what this means is eco is more eco-friendly in regards to your CPU usage. Now, precise is more CPU intensive, but it has higher resolution, which means it extends further up into the frequency spectrum so that you can EQ higher frequencies, whereas eco is more like 20 to 20. It's more restricted. So I typically like to use precise, even though it's more CPU intensive. It doesn't really make a huge difference in your CPU, and I'd rather go for quality over being too concerned about my CPU usage. And actually, in the paid version of this plugin, they have an additional setting called Insane, which they mark it as like the mastering setting. And that's like the highest resolution, it's the best quality, but it's also more CPU intensive. Now, over to the right, we have over here it says Stereo. Now, this EQ can work in mono, stereo, sum, which refers to the midsection of the stereo image, difference, which refers to the side section of the stereo image, or left or right independently. Now, all of these are independent. Unfortunately, you can't use combinations of them. So if you wanted to EQ, say, the midsection of the stereo image and the side section, you'd unfortunately have to pull up two instances of this EQ and just have them one after the other. It's not a big deal. Sometimes you don't need to do both. Sometimes you just want to do the midsection. Sometimes you just want to do the side section. It all depends, right? Next to the stereo, we have the side chain section. Now, this only becomes available to you once you've actually enabled a side chain. So I'm just going to choose an arbitrary bus over here and now it becomes active. So you can set it to external and this allows you to EQ, say, if you have this EQ on a bass and you want to duck the bass whenever the kick comes in, you can have the kick being sent to this EQ and trigger the EQ so it ducks the low frequencies of the bass. And some of you are like, well, I can do this with a compressor, but a compressor is not frequency specific. A compressor will compress the overall signal, whereas this will only affect the frequencies that you assign. So I think that's a nice little touch. Over to the right of that, we have the analyzer. I'm gonna hit play and you're gonna see over here the frequency response of the signal that's going through this EQ, which is the instrumental. Every girl gets a dream. 
Now I have that assigned to out, which is usually where I leave it. And that means that this is going to show you the frequency response after your EQ adjustments. Now you can change it to input, sidechain, or off. Now the input, if you have any settings adjusted over here, it's not going to show up on the frequency spectrum if you have it set to input. It'll only show what your EQ movements are doing to the frequencies if you set it out to output. I usually leave it there. Now, if we move down to the bottom left, we have the high pass filter and the low pass filter. And adjusting both of them, you can bring them up or down as much as you want. And in regards to slope, they both go from six decibel per octave all the way up to 72 decibels per octave. And that's just the slope. So from very subtle to very drastic. Now, when we look over at the bottom section over here, we see a lot of parameters that look very similar to a compressor. You can actually use this EQ as a compressor. However, I wouldn't really recommend it because I'd say an actual compressor is slightly more effective if you just want to compress the entire signal. Just like any other compressor, you have things like gain, you have your threshold, you have your ratio, you have your attack, and your release. Now, just above there, we have where we can activate our four different EQ bands. And then if we move over to the right, we see that we have something over here that says dry mix. Now, this is really convenient. This offers parallel processing. Now, say your adjustments are a little too overwhelming and it's hard to kind of get a good balance with adjusting the threshold and the gain and the attack and the ratio. This dry mix allows you to kind of blend in some of that dry signal there and it's sometimes faster and easier to get the mix that you want as opposed to just really tweaking this for a long time. So this is really handy. I like it. I've used it a few times and it's just really convenient. Then we have our output, which I think is self-explanatory. You just control the output signal of the EQ. And then we have our bypass to bring it in or out. And this little button right below the bypass is really cool. It actually isolates the EQ bands that you have selected. So if we have, say, I don't know, something like, let's go to 500 hertz, and I start compressing. Cool, I have the EQ going and it's dynamically EQing the signal around 500 hertz, but maybe I wanna be sure that that's the right frequency range that I wanna hone in on. I can turn on this delta and what it does is it only plays back what it is dynamically EQing. How freaking cool is that, man? That is so cool. I love that. All right, that's kind of an overview of all the various parameters. So let's look at some cool uses of this plugin. Now, I have a vocal over here. I've used an instance of the TDR EQ on this vocal. I'm gonna keep it bypassed for now so you can hear the vocals without it. But I felt like the vocals, the top end, there were some sibilants or T's that were a little harsh and I wanted to get rid of them a bit. So here's the vocals without the EQ. Dreams and nightmares are the same thing. See the pinnacles I plan to reach. So that reach over there kind of like hurts my ears a little bit. So what I did over here is I activated this band over here. I just chose any of the bands. I brought it down to about 5.5 kilohertz and I have a wide Q on it, but I set it to shelf instead of bell. And this allows me to adjust and attenuate the frequencies above 5.5K. And there's a slight curve here because of the Q. Now, once I've set that up, I have to bring down the threshold so it slowly compresses those frequencies. 
So I'm going to hit play and I'm going to bring down the thresholds. Dreams and nightmares are the same thing. See the pinnacles I plan to reach. I'm smoking sour down in Tenerife. Canary Island's my retreat. I never see defeat. As you can hear there, it's definitely taking care of the sibilance. However, it's hard finding a nice balance between brightness and smoothness. So what I'm going to do here is use the dry mix and slowly bring in some of that dry signal and get some of that brightness back in. Dreams and nightmares are the same thing. See the pinnacles I plan to reach. I'm smoking sour down in Tenerife. Canary Island's my retreat. I never see defeat. Dreams and nightmares are the same thing. See the pinnacles I plan to reach. I'm smoking sour down in Tenerife. Canary Island's my retreat. I never see defeat. Okay, I think I like it there. So uh, let me A, B that. See the pinnacles I plan to reach. 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 Cool. So I like the way that sounds. It's not as harsh, but we still have some of that signal in there. So uh, let's play it with the rest of the track. Let's hear how that sounds. Dreams and nightmares are the same thing. See the pinnacles I plan to reach. I'm smoking sour down in Tenerife. Canary Island's my retreat. I never see defeat. Great. So there's one example. Now, another example, which is a great use for this EQ, is hi hats. Now, I sometimes get instrumentals from producers that don't always adjust the velocities of their hi-hats. Now, this can create a kind of stale, repetitive sound, and I'm not crazy about that. So if you are working with a sample of a hi-hat that doesn't have varying velocities, there's a way around this. So I'm going to select a section of the hi-hats over here. And what I'm going to do is I've already put an instance of the EQ on the hi-hats. Now, what we need to do is assign a sidechain to the EQ, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to sidechain the kick to the hi-hat. And this is going to create a nice little groove that's going to go with the beat. So you'll be able to hear what I'm talking about. So I created a bus. I chose any bus that was available. So I chose 13. And I set the side chain to 13 and I activated it here. Now, this is very much like what we did in the last tutorial. You could do this with a compressor. However, what you can't do with a compressor is target a specific range of frequencies and simultaneously filter out other frequencies that you don't want. So this is like a two for one and it's all done in one plugin, which is great. So I'm going to play the hi-hat and we're going to take a listen to it. Cool, you can hear it's very repetitive, right? So I'm going to activate the side chain, which I've already done, and I'm going to start bringing down the threshold and affecting the hi-hat, but it's only going to be affecting the hi-hat when the kick comes in. So let's bring down the threshold and play it back. Cool. So there's a bit more of a groove in that hi-hat than there was before. So 
I'll take it out and bring it back in so you can kind of hear the difference. Yeah, I like that. Now, the other thing that we're going to add to this is the high pass filter. So we're not only compressing that hi-hat now that's being triggered by the kick, we're also filtering out the frequencies that we don't need. So I'm going to roll off to like 200. I mean, it isn't like we're getting a whole lot of bass from the hi-hat that we really want. So I'm going to leave it at 6 decibel per octave, and let's play that back. <laughs> All right, I like those settings. They sound good. They give my hi-hat a bit more of a groove. And that was without needing the original hi-hat instrument to adjust the velocities with. I mean, it's a pretty handy tool. I hope you enjoyed my run through of the Tokyo Don Nova EQ. It's one of my favorite EQs to use. I use it in every session. And I hope all of you will find this plugin useful and use it in your workflow. Thanks again to all of you that checked out this tutorial. We really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions about what we covered in this tutorial, please feel free to leave it in the comment section below. Also, if you have any suggestions for future tutorials, also leave that in the comment section below. As always, please like and share this video and subscribe to Machine Masters to keep up with all our latest tutorials. Thank you everyone, have a great day.